Hello, welcome to the next section, Visualizing Data with Kibana. In this section, we will explore the various components of Kibana and explore how one can use it for data analysis. Let's begin this section by configuring and preparing data Kibana. As we already saw how to install Kibana, we will skip it now. Kibana is a web application and unlike Elasticsearch and Logstash, which run on JVM, Kibana is powered by Node.js. During boot up, Kibana tries to connect to Elasticsearch running on HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 9200. We saw that too. Kibana is started on the default port 5601. So, in the URL tab, change this app to status and you will be taken to the status page. The status page displays information about the server's resource usage and lists the installed plugins. Kibana should be configured to run against an Elasticsearch node of the same version. Running different patch version releases of Kibana and Elasticsearch is generally supported, but not highly encouraged. Running different major version releases of Kibana and Elasticsearch is not supported, nor is running minor versions of Kibana that are newer than the version of Elasticsearch. What if we want to change some of these settings? All the configurations of Kibana are stored in a file called kibana.yml, which is present under the folder config under kibana underscore home. When this file is opened in your favorite text editor, it contains many properties that are commented by default. What this means is that unless those are overridden, the value specified in the property is considered the default value. We will now look at the key configuration settings that one should look for when starting out with Kibana. First is the server.port. This setting specifies the port Kibana would be serving requests. It defaults to 5601. Next comes server.host. Specifies the address to which the Kibana server will bind. IP addresses and host names are both valid values. It defaults to localhost. Then comes elasticsearch.url. The URL of the Elasticsearch instance to use for all your queries. It defaults to HTTP localhost 9200. If your Elasticsearch is running on a different host or port, make sure you update this property. Next is Elasticsearch.username and Elasticsearch.password. If Elasticsearch is secured, specify the username and password details that have access to Elasticsearch here. In the next section, XPack, we will be exploring how to secure Elasticsearch. Server.name is a human readable display name that identifies this Kibana instance. It defaults to host name. Then comes Kibana.index. Kibana uses an index in Elasticsearch to store saved searches, visualizations, and dashboards. Kibana creates a new index if the index doesn't already exist. Defaults to .kibana. Note that the YML file is space sensitive or indentation aware. Make sure all the uncommented properties have the same indentation or else an error will be thrown upon Kibana startup and it will fail to start. As Kibana is all about gaining insight from data, let's load some sample data that we will use as we move ahead. One of the most common use cases is log analysis. For this, we will load Apache server logs into Elasticsearch using Logstash and then using it in Kibana for analysis and building visualizations. Make sure you have Logstash version 5.6 and above installed. Here, logs.gz file is placed. Also make sure that you unzip this file into your working directory. Here, create a config file named apache.conf. Here, add this code. Here, see to it that you give the proper path of logs file. Save this file. Open the command prompt and start the log stash using this line of code. This is done so that it can begin processing the logs and index it to Elasticsearch. Log stash will take a while to start and once it gets started, you should see a series of dots, a dot per processed log line. Let's now verify the total number of documents, log events indexed into Elasticsearch. This is the code to do it. In the response, you should see a count of 300,000. That's all for now. 